So I like information. And when a car manufacturer keeps information from me, I want to do everything I can in order to get that information so that I can use it for some purpose. Volvo in particular is very bad with this. Um, as you've seen from maybe my other videos on my channel, every single car I've owned so far, I've done something to get information out of the car that the car doesn't give to me. Um, Volvo is uh, very good at hiding information from their uh, customers, and I don't like that. So I decided to take on the project of, well, first of all, getting boost pressure uh, out of the car's ECU, which is not available via OBD2, by the way, in case you thought maybe that was that easy. Um, and two, I wanted to see what other information I could get from um, the car's CAN bus systems. Uh, the project I had in my Volkswagen was similar, although they were actually much more open with the information on their car. All the information I could have possibly wanted was available over CAN using the OBD, the OBD protocol. Um, this made it really easy for me to just use a off-the-shelf library and a little LCD in order to display the information I wanted to display. So because Volvo likes to be difficult, they put the bare minimum of information on the OBD protocol. That means that all of those ELM327 readers and the Bluetooth, uh, you know, with the Torque app and that stuff won't be able to see the information that I can see here. What it required was reverse engineering the uh, protocol that the Diagnostic Suite Vita uses. Um, it's similar to measuring blocks on the Volkswagen cars, although I think it's a little simpler. Um, I actually purchased a Vita, uh, or um, a, uh, the cable you need for Vita, in order to uh, sniff the traffic that it was sending onto the car's bus and sort of see what it was doing and see what data was getting back. And I was able to use that information to develop my own method of sending those messages and receiving the data and doing something with it. So uh, you've probably noticed the little OLED display is where most of that information gets used. Um, I just had that lying around if I would have gone back and do it again, I probably wouldn't have used it because it's a little bit difficult for the Arduino Mega to drive. Um, it requires a lot of memory, and because I can't use it with SPI, and I have to use I squared C, it's not the fastest thing in the world. So refresh rate is limited. Um, it's okay enough, but like I said, if I could go back and do it again, I probably would have used an LCD. Um, so the way this project works is I have an Arduino down here. You can just, uh, let's see. There you go, you can barely see it there. It's sitting on the, uh, the protector for uh, your knees in the event of a crash. Um, that's down there and it's connected to the OBD port to the high-speed CAN bus. Um, on this car, the high-speed CAN bus that's the CAN bus, the ECU, the steering modules, ABS modules, and all the important car stuff communicates on. That's available directly on the uh, OBD2 connector. Older Volvos, or so I'm told, have a special way to access that CAN bus via the OBD2 port. Um, I've never played with an older Volvo. Supposedly, it involves sending a message periodically on the K line, which connects that uh, high speed CAN bus to the uh, OBD port. I'm, again, not sure exactly how that works. My car is new enough that I guess they got rid of that functionality. Um, both the high and low speed buses are available directly all the time on that OBD2 connector, which is pretty nice. It made this a lot simpler than having to splice into CAN bus wires elsewhere in the car. Um, that Arduino is a uh, Machina M1.1. It's an old version of the Machina that I got sent uh, for free by them when they were first starting out. 
basically it's just an Arduino Mega with a canvas shield built into it. Uh, if you wanted to do this entire project with an Arduino Mega and a canvas shield, you could. The actual hardware isn't that much different. The only difference between that and using an actual canvas shield is that the canvas shield uses a non-Arduino pin for the, for the chip select. Um, they actually, in their new Machina models, decided to go away from that and just use Arduino pins for most of it. I think they also use a Douay processor now, too. Uh, I can definitely see why, because it's a little bit difficult to get this thing working uh, if you don't know how to do port manipulation on the Arduino processor. Um, the uh, rest of the project is comparatively simple. It's basically just sending messages on the CAN bus, waiting for the reply from the ECU, and figuring out exactly how that data is formatted in the CAN frame. Volvo, again, for some unknown reason, wants to use extended IDs for their CAN bus. Um, that goes for both the high and low speed CAN bus use extended IDs. Um, additionally, the other thing that I'm able to do is look at broadcast data on the bus and do things with it. Uh, for this particular project, as it sits right now, I'm using data from, I think it's the CEM, sending data about the position of the uh, dimmer switch here, and also the status of the headlights and also from the steering module to see when the cruise control cancel button gets pressed. So those are broadcasts throughout the entire car on the high-speed CAN bus. I'm not entirely sure if they go anywhere else, but they're broadcast for all the modules in the car. So for example, when you dim the uh, display, the module in this switch sends a CAN bus message to all the rest of the modules like the uh, instrument cluster and the radio in order to dim them all at the same time. Oh, and the doors, actually. The doors also have lights that get dim. So if I dim, if I use this dimmer switch here and go up and down, my display will also dim with it. Uh, I had a little safety feature in there where if you bring it all the way down to the bottom, it turns the display off just in case I'm driving at night and the lowest uh, brightness on that display is still too bright. I didn't want to have to unplug it, which is actually a problem I ran into on some of my previous projects. Uh, it just, if you're driving at night with no uh, street lights or anything, it can get kind of bright, especially since it's blue, and uh, I wanted to be able to turn it off if I needed to. So the other thing that I do is if the headlights are on, which I can't really simulate here very well, uh, it will multiply the display brightness by a factor that I chose. Um, I think it goes to about 70% of what the normal brightness would be, just in order to bring it down a notch and not blind you at night. Because that OLED, even though it looks pretty dim right now, is pretty bright when there's no lights out. So the cruise control cancel button is used for changing pages on the display. If I hold the button for a couple of seconds, we'll go to all the different pages that I have. As of right now, there's six pages. Uh, this one is just the main boost pressure display, and you can see it goes up and down when I uh, hit the gas. Uh, the page after that is graphing the boost pressure, and I'll give you a good idea of what that looks like. So you can see there's spikes of boost pressure in the manifold. Uh, this is engine temperature. I have that set to update very slowly because there's no point in going really fast. Um, you can see it's going up and it'll eventually go back down. Uh, this is graphing the coolant temperature. Again, that updates very slowly because there's no point in having a fast updating coolant temperature display if it doesn't update that quickly. Uh, this is intake temperature. Um, and then this is the graph of intake temperature. That one updates a little bit faster. So, there's only six pages right now. I could always add more, but those are the ones that I thought were the most interesting to look at uh, when I was driving. All the data from the broadcast frames is not available publicly for somewhat obvious reasons. Uh, Volvo, even in their diagnostic program, doesn't have any data about 
what messages get sent on the CAN bus uh, to other modules. Uh, so in order to figure out what those broadcast frames did, I had to sit here and log the traffic, and there's a lot of it, by the way, um, and just press buttons and see if I could figure out what each um, message meant. Um, I would love for more people to help me figure out what that stuff uh, means. There's actually a pretty good community doing it uh, for Volkswagen cars, although unfortunately there's almost no overlap between Volvo and any other manufacturer as far as uh, broadcast traffic in their vehicles. Um, this car uses a Bosch ME9 ECU, and I think that also extends to some of the other modules. I think Bosch sells them as like a set. Um, I, as far as I know, this project will work perfectly fine on any other car that uses the ME9 system. Although, um, I think that some of the broadcast IDs change from year to year and from car to car. So you may have to figure out if those change for your car if you're going to try it. When the car gets shut off, uh, we look for the broadcast frame that uh, has the ignition status in it. If it turns off, we dim the display off to zero and we go into a loop where we basically just check to see if we get a broadcast frame for the ignition status again. And if we do, we turn it back on. So that's what that looks like. So before anybody says, wait a minute, you're sitting there idling your car, why is your boost pressure at zero? Um, the sensor for that data is actually in the intercooler before the throttle plate. Uh, there is no vacuum uh, at that point in the intake. This car does not use speed density, so it does not need to have a map sensor in the intake. I think it has that sensor in the intercooler just to make sure that it, uh, the boost pressure doesn't exceed what it's programmed to exceed and also to do closed loop with the um, turbo control solenoid. So there's no reason for it to know if there's manifold vacuum or not because the MAF sensor takes care of all of that. Um, I also suspect that the intake temperature is also retrieved from the same sensor. Now, I would love to be able to run all of this stuff off of broadcast traffic, but some of this data is not sent over the CAN bus in broadcast. The boost gauge or the uh, map sensor goes directly to the ECU and no other modules need that information. So unfortunately, our only, our, the only way we can use it and get it is by asking for it, which unfortunately means we have to send we have two messages on the bus, a set, you know, a request and a, and a uh, response instead of just one, and that adds traffic to the bus, which I don't really like. Obviously, there's no way to really get around that, but that's it is what it is. I have for future projects, I have an Arduino Due, which um, the uh, processor on the Arduino Due has two built-in hardware CAN transceivers. Um, that will allow me to not only operate much faster, because the Due is a much more capable processor, but I can also use it as a gateway in between a module and the rest of the bus, which will allow me to isolate messages sent from certain um, modules. And with that information, like I, for example, I, I can know that um, engine RPM data is not going to come from any other module besides the ECU. So if I'm looking at just the ECU's data or what it's sending, I can know that one of those messages that it's sending periodically is going to be RPM data. So that would allow me to isolate that particular message and make my job a little bit easier as far as documenting the broadcast traffic. Um, 
I actually had an idea uh, that I would put the Arduino in between the instrument cluster and the rest of the bus, and that could allow me to display other interesting things. Um, I actually managed to find out the CAN bus frame that incremented the, um, uh, the odometer. Of course, it didn't de-increment the odometer, so I actually added a couple hundred miles to my car by accident. So this is potentially dangerous. Um, I would like to maybe one day be able to get rid of the OLED display and display information on the LCD that's already in the instrument cluster. Um, but that's kind of a lofty goal at, as of right now. Um, but one day it may happen. Um, I was also able to get the needles to move on the tachometer and the speedometer um, although, because the car is always sending broadcast traffic to put them back to where they're supposed to be, all they did is really jump around. They didn't stay there. So, because the Arduino just can't send traffic fast enough to overwrite what the car is writing, I, it's not very useful, unfortunately. So, um, anyway, that's basically the overview of this project. I'll have the link to my GitHub uh, repository that has the code um, and some other information about it if you want to try it. Um, I also have a list of all the various things you can request from the ECU. Um, you can also activate certain functions, although I haven't tried that. Um, none of them are particularly useful. There's uh, some functions for doing uh, emissions related stuff like the EVAP solenoid. There's some tests for turning on and off the radiator fans. Um, basically just testing stuff. It's nothing that you would ever want to run when you were driving the car or even when you were stopped. It's not that sort of useful. Um, I'm sure if you took the time to document the low speed CAN bus you could also find frames that would allow you to open and close the windows or the locks or even the doors like the trunk for example turn on and off the wipers it's all there um, in fact I did find some of it but I was never able to figure out exactly how it worked and I didn't really think that was particularly useful for my project um, so anyway that's that's everything I can give to you guys definitely check out the github and if you do if you are interested in helping with the project, I'd be more than happy to have people give their input. Um, some of that code definitely needs some looking at by some other eyes. Uh, anyway, um, that's it. Thank you for watching.